All right, so problem 15, we have an experiment that's going to be conducted to determine whether children learn their multiplication better by with flashcards or with computer. I'm going to say flashcards, but, you know, who knows? Well, they do. Uh, so they say children, you know, they're going to have some children that volunteer for the experiment, and they're going to be broken into one of two groups. So one of them is going to have the flashcards, and the other group is going to have the computer. And they're mentioning that because the children's gender may affect, you know, the outcome, you know, how well they will do, they're going to block by gender. Then after the uh, after they do their their um you know their practice with the flashcards and computer or computer program, then they're going to take a test. And the question is now, based on the way this experiment is set up. Why can't we not do a double blind experiment? Okay, so let's just kind of make a scenario where we have, let me draw, draw a diagram so you guys can really understand this if you need you know the extra explanation. So you have all these students, you have boys and girls. And in one group, you're gonna have, let's just say you have like a hundred students or something. You're gonna have maybe like 50 of them go to the um, flashcards group. And the other 50 of them go to the computer group. They were the practicing by computer. Then after they do the, in their practice, they both take the same test. They both, all the, all the um, kids in each group are going to take the same test. And then they're going to measure how good they do. And then from there, they're going to be like, okay, looks like flashcards or computer, you know, did better. And they're mixing boys and girls. Now, remember, a double blind is when the experimenter and the subjects, in this case, the kids, don't know what treatment they're getting. So it's possible to have it set up so that the experimenter doesn't know which group is doing the flashcards and which group um, does it with the computer. But the, the kids are not going to be able to like not know. I mean, like they're going to know if they're practicing with flashcards or a computer. You know, that's just part of it. Um, so they're going to know what group they're in, and so um, it cannot be double blind. It's it, it's not it's not going to be um, possible in the sense. So that's going to be the answer is going to be C. They're going to know whether he or she used flashcards or the computer. It doesn't have to do with gender because they're both going to be mixed up, boys and girls in each group. All right, next one. So we have a police officer. Police officers using a radar device to check motorist speeds. Prior to beginning that speed check, the officer estimates that 40% of motorists will be driving more than five miles per hour over the speed limit. So assuming that the, that the, office, that the police is correct with their 40%, um, let's just write this right now, the probability that um, probability of X, so X is driving, over, driving five miles or more over the speed limit is 0.4. That's their assumption. We're asked, what's the probability that among all four of those drivers, the officer is going to have at least one of them that he's going to have to um, give a ticket to because at least one of them is driving more than five miles over the speed limit. Okay, so you have four individuals, you know, um, like it doesn't matter which one. Um, Gets a ticket as long as one of them. Let's say you, you let's say you have individuals A, B, C, D. Like there's so many possibilities where there could be at least one of them because you could have all four of them, all three of them, all or two of them, or just one of them. There's a lot of combinations. So um, a way that I would go about this, and the way I went about this is find the probability that none of them drive over the speed limit because the probability that none of them drive over the speed limit is easy to find and from there we can find the probability that at least one of them drove over the speed limit by setting this up into this equation so we can we can have one minus the probability that none of them broke the law or so one minus probability <clears throat> excuse me one minus probability that x equals zero and that will be equals to the probability that X is greater than one. 
X is the number of um, drivers that went over the speed limit. So we want to find the probability that one or more of them went over the speed limit. So um, this is probably, like you've probably seen examples like this, hopefully, but let me, again, just set it up like you, how you maybe you would see it when you first learned in chapter or unit five about probability. You can have this that the probability of none of the motors or the probability of X being zero, plus the probability that X is one, plus the probability that X is two, plus the probability that X is three, plus da da da, all the way to probability that X is four in this case. This is all, these are all the possibilities. So this is always going to equal one. So instead of solving for all this, we just do it the other way. We just subtract the probability that x equals zero from both sides. And then we end up, you know, one minus the probability that x equals zero is equal to all that. Now the probability that x equals zero is just going to be right now, space one, we're going to have one minus 0 0.4 to the fourth. And we just plug and chug. One minus 0 0.4 to the four. And we'll get 97, about 97.5 percentage. The answer is E. Try to just um, because again, when I explain it, especially if you haven't seen this one, it's gonna be it's gonna be confusing. Um, so I'm sorry if I can maybe confuse you, but um, just maybe look and practice over a couple of these, maybe in your notes or in the, on the practice test, because um, like they're always gonna be that they're always they're I will I always see them in that form. They never get like any more complicated than that, or any more like any more like higher level math you need. All right, 17, zucchinis weigh, the zucchini weights are about norm, are normally distributed with the mean of 0.8 pounds and standard deviation of 0.25 pounds. Which of the following shaded regions would best represent the probability that a randomly selected zucchini will weigh between 0.55 pounds and 1.3 pounds? This is an interesting one. Well, the, the mean is 0.8, so, um. That means mu is 0 0.8. And our total standard deviation is 0 0.25. And if we're going from 0 0.55 to 1.2, the so 0.5, 0 0.55, sorry, 1.3. Point five five to one point three. One point three is point five more than point eight. Is zero point eight plus zero point five. That'll give you one point three. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Zero point eight plus zero point five is one point eight. That'll be the upper end. And point five is just two standard deviations. So you're adding two standard deviations to the mean. And 0.55 is just 0.8 minus 0.25. That's going to be 0.55. And so that's just one standard deviation below. So our range is going to be point from one minus one standard deviation to two standard deviations above and below the mean. So then we just let's see uh, where we where we have. Oh, and it's, it's just gonna be A, as you can see, as you can see from the minus and plus two. Eighteen. In the recent survey, high school students and their parents were asked to rate. 60 recently released movies. 
They were rating on a scale from one to nine, one horrible and nine excellent. For each movie, the average rating by the students and the average rating of the parents was calculated, and the scatter plot is given here. So, any this would be like the x or the horizontal values are the students, the vertical are the parents. So, like this point would be like it's just like x y or x rating or students rating, parents rating. Maybe you want to go. Maybe you want to write like s. P or something. So which of these is, is justified by the scatter plot? So the movies that students the students like the best also tend to be the movies that students like the best. The, stu the movies that the students like the best also tend to be the movies that the parents like the best. Okay, so that, that works because we have a positive correlation as the students' rating goes up, the um, parents' rating also goes up. If, if we draw like a trend line, Maybe something like that. Now, but the students tend to give lower scores. The students tend to get lower scores. Well, so let's do this. If they gave the same score every single time, let's say, hypothetically speaking, we would have a perfect diagonal they would lie along this line. This is, this is the line y equals x or x equals y. Now, if, it's, if there are points below, that means that the y coordinate is less than the x coordinate. So in the below here, below the line, parents are have lower. Parents' ratings are lower. Above here, the students Are, are lower, or you can say the parents or the parents are greater. So point, points falling in this region, since they're pretty much all below the line, that's uh, basically we're gonna need to look where it says parents have um, overall lower ratings. Okay, so B, the movies that students like the best also tend to be the movies that parents like the best, but the students tend to give higher scores. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. So parents lower scores, parents lower scores, or students higher scores. So it's going to be B. Um, and we, we, I can show you why it's not C because it's not the same scores because it was the same scores. It'll be all on the long. It'll be all along the diagonal. Like the best parents, like parents like the least. No, it'd be the if it was if it was if it was D or E, the lines the line would be turning this way. It'll be a negative correlation. All right, so I'm gonna take a break there. I don't like to, I like to break this um, practice exam up. So let me know what you guys think. If any feedback is helpful, give me a like and subscribe. If, of course, if, only if you're finding it helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video where I pick up on problem 19.